Welcome to On the Record, a cooperative production of the Ellensburg Daily Record and Central Washington University. I'm Joanna Markell, editor of the Daily Record, here with uh, CWU President Jim Godino. And we'll be discussing a grab bag of topics again today, um, from the special session to recommendations from the Academic Planning Task Force. And as always, we welcome viewer questions. So we haven't met for a month, more than a month. It's been a while. And one of the hot topics on campus has been a certain um, retention incentive. Yes. Um, would you like to talk about that a little bit? Um, the, one of the big questions on campus has been, where might that money come from? Well, that's, that's a, it's an impossible question to answer because it can, well, I guess the answer is it can come from anywhere, of any of the fund sources. Uh, it can come from future fund sources. One of the reasons the... Uh, trustees structured it the way they did was so that it wasn't competing with any particular program. So it, it, it can come out of uh, any, it can come out of the tuition funds, the state funds, the auxiliary funds, ex I mean it can come out, or a combination of all of those. Uh, it can also come out of future earnings even afterwards, that is the university in, in, in theory, legally, I don't think they would do this, but could borrow the money and, and pay for it uh, over time. So it, it will come uh, as many unfunded uh, obligations of the university, it, it, the, that's the job of the trustees over the next uh, five years, is to determine where that, uh, that funding will come from. I should probably take a step back for our viewers and explain that this was $500,000 yeah. over the course of five years correct. that you would receive if um, you stay for five years. That's correct. Which brings up a, a question, too. What um, would you like to see happen in, tr in your tenure here for that five years? Um, are there goals you'd like to accomplish during that time? Oh, gosh, absolutely. I mean, absolutely there are. In fact, that was really the reason I accepted it. I knew there'd be controversy, and the easiest thing would have been is to say, you know, no, let's not do that, and then just go find another place to be. Um, I elected not to do that, obviously. So uh, it's because of what we can accomplish here. And, and the goals are so vast. I mean, they're really incorporated into our strategic plan, which you know, anybody who wants to read uh, on, at the university or, or off the university, it's online. It's, it's, if you just navigate to our, our, uh, our, our website and just follow the links to the president's page, it's right there. And, and that document incorporates the overall plans. But let me, I'll give it to you in, in, uh, in, in kind of straightforward, simple terms, uh, the primary one, the, the, the theme number one, as it's called in the strategic plan, is to uh, in, it enhance the already very good educational experience we give to our students. It's to uh, enhance the, the retention of students. It's to, it's to uh, uh, better articulate and manifest the success of all of our students. And it's also... Um, a desire to reach out and to increase access to even more students. And that w becomes a, a, another theme. It's to globalize the university, to reach out to more place-bound students, to reach out to veterans, um, our, our military veterans, and, and to either attract those students to Ellensburg or in some cases, if that's not possible, to find ways of bringing programs to those to those students, and in that regard, um, the, stu the the articulation of student success, what it means to be successful, will change a bit from a student say who's coming to us from high school and is going to spend four years here in the more traditional residential college experience, to a veteran who is returning from Afghanistan and per either staying in the service or separating from the service, older. Uh, maybe has two or three years of college already and wants to finish their college to get a, a transitional um, uh, career path. So success will mean different things to different students, and I want to have a university that's, that's um, agile enough to respond to those, those student needs. We know our students are going to work in a global environment, so we need to make sure that the, that international global experience is available to them, either by having international students here or by finding opportunities to bring our students there uh, to have faculty exchanges. Very, very uh, uh, important thing to, to, our, uh, to the, the success of our students. We also can do, we do a very, very good job at Central uh, Washington University uh, in, in terms of research activities, particularly given the primary mission of our university as being instructional. But we could do better, we can do more, particularly in, in areas that relate to economic development. 
So our research foundation, uh, our efforts to create a um, uh, innovation and entrepreneurial institute, and to help collect staff, uh, student, and particularly faculty efforts to create those innovations to help uh, people on campus, but also off campus, uh, in in the community, uh, mature their ideas and develop more more jobs and more wealth. That's a very very important criteria for the university. And then I think the 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 fifth theme um, that's embedded in our in our overall vision of the university is to create stability of, of a resource base so that um, the ups and downs of our state government become less. A volatile force. They'll continue to be that way forever, but we need to find a way of, of smoothing out that up and down curve that doesn't place such a burden on our students, and that becomes a very, very important uh, goal. So in the next five years, and five years is not very far away, uh, that's the pathway that, that we want to set for the university. Um, to go back, that's a big list. Um, Talking about international students, I know that right. the provost has been over to Asia. She's um, been to Asia. She's been to uh, Korea, Vietnam, and China. What is she doing there, and how does that fit into CWU's? Uh, she's she's done a couple of things. One place she went, for example, is Macau, and Macau is interested in bringing our students there. There are some um, English language schools in, in Macau that have uh, difficulty attracting uh uh, teachers who who are native speakers of English, and so because there's all the idiomatic uh, issues with the language, and they want they want that experience. We'd like to have our students have international experiences. So Macau, she's she developed a relationship with uh, with a university. Actually, seen that with a university with a with a K twelve environment there, where our education majors will be doing their student teaching in Macau, and while the students will pay tuition to Central Washington University. Most of their living expenses and their stipend will be paid for by the school system in Macau. So that was one thing she did. There is a program uh, in, uh, from Korea, um, a university that has a, uh, a program of, of essentially in-service training for um, uh, city managers, city executives. And they want those, those, uh, those executives to come to Central and get master's degrees. So she signed a a memorandum of understanding with the university to bring essentially middle uh, level managers at the city and county level over there, their, their, their uh, uh, corresponding uh, governance to, to the university. And then we're exploring other sorts of exchange universities, less well developed with other universities and, and groups uh, there. And, and does it fit into the university's plans too to have more international students attend Central? Oh, absolutely, because it's you know some of our students, like those Ed students, will be able to get to another country to have that experience. Some just won't be able to uh, the, the financially; they won't be able to, or the time, um, or just the opportunity. So, having international students come here is a way of just broadening the experience of all students uh, on our uh, at our university. And that's centers as well as, uh, as the Ellensburg uh, campus. So some of the students are already international students are coming through our centers and either, uh, excuse me, through the community colleges and either matriculate to the center or matriculate uh, to Ellensburg. Okay. Um, going back to the five years, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, when you met with students who came to your office um, right. in protest, right. uh, one of the things that you brought up there too was um, giving faculty more time to Finish. I'm not exactly sure what, but maybe you could talk about that a little bit. Um, well, well, I don't specifically remember the question. There were yeah. lots of questions coming at me, and many of them were coming at me at the same time. So I, I don't remember exactly, but I, I'll say this. One of the most valuable resources on a university campus, if not the most valuable resource on a university campus, is faculty time. I mean, that's what teaches the classes. That's what engages in the research. Now, everybody's time is important. But as a variable, uh, faculty time becomes very, very important to the success of a university. For example, I mean, the, the, the time it takes for, for um, our specialists to, to, uh, to videotape and edit this is very important time without any question, but it's somewhat student independent. That is, if I had 100 more or 100 less students, it would be the same. Faculty time is one of the variables on a, on a college campus. So the more time you have for faculty, the more research they can do, the more individualized instruction they can do, the more time they can spend 
uh, reinventing the curriculum or, or uh, engaging in pedagogical uh, efforts. So time, faculty time becomes very, very important to a, to a university. And it's a thing that becomes strained very, very quickly when there are, when there are budget cuts. Okay. 